guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. Today's video is going to be gear that I acquired but no longer use. If you are new here, welcome to the Hike Oregon family. I make hiking and backpacking vlogs as well as gear reviews and just general tips and tricks videos to help you become a more confident hiker and backpacker. If you enjoy content like that, make sure to click that red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified every time I make a new video. And as always, if you want more content from me, you can support me over on Patreon, where for just as little as a dollar, you get two to three extra videos a month. This video was highly requested and what a great idea because I have been hiking and backpacking for many years now and I have also been making YouTube videos for a while. So I went through my channel and looked at all the gear lists and gear review videos and just went through to see what I no longer use. So I'm gonna put all the things I no longer use in this video and I will be brutally honest and tell you why I no longer use these these items. I got the REI Quarter Dome 1 back in 2016. That model is very different than the current model. If you're looking at that tent, don't go off my recommendation because I have not tried the new version. The new version looks much different than the old version and honestly looks much better. The Quarter Dome 1 in 2016 I just really didn't like the way the tent set up. I didn't like the limited space, um, just didn't like so many things about it. So I actually returned it after using it on just one trip. That's how much I didn't like it. So I got the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2 right after I returned my REI Quarter Dome 1 and I used it from 2016 and I finally gave it away in 2020. It was a great tent. I used it a lot. There was two things I really didn't like about it and that was the front entry. It didn't have side entry doors and um, I saw all my friends with side entry doors having a much easier time when camping. And then then I also wanted a freestanding tent. That tent was still in great condition and I ended up giving it away to someone who needed a tent. This solar powered fold out lantern was so ridiculous. I don't know why I bought it. It honestly was so heavy and so bulky. I carried this lantern and a headlamp. Such overkill. I used it on my 2016 PCT section hike and then I haven't used it since. And same goes for my Power Monkey solar charger. It was very expensive. It worked really well, to be honest. It charged my devices on my PCT section hike in 2016, but then I wanted to downsize my backpacking base weight. This thing is just enormously heavy. I still have it and um, I do a lot more car camping now for Hike Oregon research trips and honestly I think I will just start using it for that because it still works and I still have it and it was very expensive. This GSI Outdoors trowel definitely got upgraded once I found the titanium trowels. Oh my goodness, they're just so much smaller and lighter weight. This trowel was so bulky, so heavy, but I didn't know any better. Oh goodness, the Katadyne Hiker Pro Micro Filter. I had a heck of a time with this thing. Oh goodness, I remember filtering many a water bottle with this crazy filter. There are two tubes that you have to deal with and you can't mix them up because one tube goes in the dirty water and one goes in the clean water bottle. It's a nightmare. 
honestly, I don't know how we didn't get Giardia from contaminated water because you're bound to get something contaminated. The drips from all the hoses and they touch each other and I have no idea, honestly, how we didn't get sick. Terrible idea. Also really difficult to filter into water bottles when you're dealing with these many hoses and trying to balance on a rock or a log in the middle of the lake. Anyway, I still own this thing. It's so heavy. It was expensive, so I wanted to keep it. Obviously, I'm not going to use it for backpacking, but yeah, it lives in my car for emergency water needs. Oh, the nature hike sleeping pad. If you have been following me since the beginning of my YouTube days, you know about the nature hike sleeping pad. This was my very first piece of gear that ever got sent to me and uh, I was elated. I thought I had made it in the big time YouTube space because some company called Nature Hike was sending me gear. I was thrilled. Anyway, I tried out this sleeping pad. It's not half bad, to be honest. I did compare it to the Thermarest Neo Air. Not really comparable, to be honest. And the R value is unknown, which is kind of lame. It works great for a beginner backpacking sleeping pad. It is quite heavy, to be honest. And nowadays, I mean, I got this back in 2016. So nowadays, there are like lightweight sleeping pad options that are less expensive. Back then, sleeping pads were all pretty expensive and there wasn't really anything lightweight that wasn't like over $100. So this was a great alternative. So um, no go on the nature hike. It's fine, I guess, um, and would honestly make a great car camping sleeping pad. I gave this away and it's been given away by that person. And so it's just kind of made its way through friends and um, it does, it has been used quite a bit actually. And while we're talking about sleeping pads, I will mention the Thermarest Neo Air. I used this quite a bit and hated every second of it. It is the loudest sleeping pad ever. It sounds like a bag of chips. Every time you move around, it's crunchy and crinkly and oh dear God, you cannot sleep on this thing. After being miserable for a, quite a few backpacking trips, I decided to get something different. I've never looked back, to be honest. This was terrible. And something you guys might be surprised about is the Z-Pax 5 Degree Down Sleeping Bag. I used this for many years as well and was not convinced that it's a 5 Degree Down Bag. I currently have a 15 Degree Down Bag that is 10 times warmer than the Z-Pax bag ever was. I used it for four years and, um, I mean, it was decent. I was just always cold, so I got something different. The Cocoon Air Core Pillow. I have tried a few of these blow up pillows. I could not be convinced that it was comfortable. Didn't matter how much or little I inflated it, it always seemed to hurt my ear. I don't know why, just the way it pressed on my head hurt my ear. And then also if you inflate them too much, they like slip out from under your head um, because the sleeping pad is slippery, right? For me, the blow up pillows just really did not work at all. The Hydro Blue Versa Flow was also a piece of gear that was sent to me. None of the other pieces of gear I've talked about today were sent to me besides the Nature Hike sleeping pad and this water filter. Back in the day, online was being compared to the Sawyer Squeeze and it was like a cheaper alternative to the Sawyer Squeeze. It worked fine. Honestly, I used it a few times. The flow rate was all right, but of course, not as good as the Sawyer Squeeze. I ended up giving it away and um, just stuck with the Sawyer Squeeze. And last but not least is the Sea to Summit Alpha Spork. I don't know why I stuck with this spork for so many years. Every time I used it, it cut my mouth. <laughs> it had this coating on it that 
felt like sandpaper. I don't know why I dealt with that for so long, and I finally realized you didn't have to have this horrible coating on your sporks. I ditched the Sea to Summit Alpha Spork, and I got um, a nice new shiny one from Amazon that was about half the price and doesn't hurt my mouth. Now, I have two pieces of gear that didn't quite fit in the gear I acquired but no longer use category. They are gear items that I still use, but not for the reason that I bought them for. The first one is the REI Lyra 24 sleeping bag. It's a synthetic sleeping bag that I purchased for my 2016 PCT section hike, and I absolutely love this sleeping bag. It is so, so warm and so, so comfy. It's just a synthetic bag, so it's super, super heavy. And um, someone bought me the z Packs bag in 2017, so I ditched the synthetic sleeping bag for backpacking, but I still use it for car camping. It is my exclusive car camping sleeping bag. I absolutely love it, and I use it every time I car camp. And then the other gear that I still use, but not for the reason I bought it for, is my Thermarest Z-Light sleeping pad. So the closed cell foam sleeping pad that I purchased for my PCT section hike in 2016. I also used it in 2018. I used it on many, 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 many backpacking trips until I just found it uncomfortable after a while. I'm a side sleeper, so this tiny piece of foam just really is uncomfortable. And I realized a couple more ounces and I can be fully comfortable is so worth it to me. I was really going down that ultra light base weight rabbit hole and after a while I just realized, okay, this is stupid. I prefer to be more comfortable on my trips and just carry a little bit more. I still have like two or three of these guys because they never seem to wear out and for some reason I kept getting new ones, but they are perfect for sit pads for backpacking because they are a little bit bigger than the normal sit pads you can buy from Thermarest. So what I do is I just cut the Z-Lite in half and then I have two large sit pads. These sit pads are great. They can go in front of your tent so that you can sit there Put your shoes on, take your shoes off. You can stretch, <laughs> you can sit more comfortably, you can do some yoga if you want to. Like, they're just so useful and they really only weigh a couple of ounces. So, um, I love taking them on backpacking trips, but not for sleeping on. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions regarding any of this gear or why I no longer use it, please comment down below. And if you don't already, go check me out over on. On Instagram. That's where I post pictures of all of my recent hiking and backpacking adventures. And if you want to hike and backpack here in this amazing state of Oregon, check out my website hikeoregon.net and you'll find tons of information there. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next adventure.